Welcome back to NASCAR on NBC. Jeff, back-to-back -back short tracks, Richmond a week ago. Last weekend was Martinsville. William Byron, how impressive is the driver of the 24 winning now three of the first eight races on the season? You know, you always wonder, Steve, when, when a team goes for a championship and it doesn't work out, how they're going to respond. Well, this team just came out mad, angry, and they are just unbelievable. I mean, they're just – they have speed. This is very uh, – you know, look, I don't want to get my get ahead of myself too much, but this looks a lot like Jimmy Johnson kind of racing. You know, we're going to race hard, but we're going to be super clean. We're just going to be faster than you. And let's drop the green flag with a few laps left to go. And we're going to just drive away from you. Whatever, whatever you want to do, whatever race you want to have, let's have it. And we're just going to be faster. And and he and Rudy, uh, once they've been, once they've teamed up at Hendrick, uh, they have been awesome. They have been really good. So. It's fun to watch it. Uh, the question is, who can who can answer it? Um, you know, he has great talent that he's competing against every week within those Hendrick doors. Uh, you know better than I, but they you know they have a they have excellence written all over them, and he's making everybody in that organization step it up. And when I say that, you're talking about Kyle Larson, a guy that I proclaimed to be the best driver in the world last year at one point. Uh, so it's just super impressive what he's doing. Yeah, I felt like this looked like the 24 at Martinsville for the last few decades. And what I mean by that is it wasn't flashy until it had to be. Didn't qualify as well as they had hoped outside the top 15, but methodically worked their way up into the first stage. Like, look, the blueprint to Martinsville, in my opinion, you spend the first half of the race figuring out a way to get into the top 10, the next third getting into the top five, and the last 10 or 15%, you try to win the race. And that's what the 24 did. He took advantage of track position early when you still have a chance to get it. Uh, and then really, I went back and watched green flag pit stops. I try to hand this win to something other than just a dominant car, but I think I was wrong. It was just the best car on the racetrack over the last 80 or 90 laps. And then a pretty clean green, white checker. Were you surprised? I guess, Jeff, we saw, you know, in a, you know, a short, a two lap sprint to finish. Uh, an overtime finish. Did you think we would see a little bit more chaos? It seemed pretty clean with three teammates leading the field. Yeah, th there was a bit of chaos, but it was back in the field. And, and uh, but up front, I, I think a ton of respect here. Blaney, you know, he's the kind of the lone ranger and, and he was wanting to push the issue. But I do think a lot of respect shown, not just by the Hendrick drivers, but by everybody in this front eight or nine, 10. Uh, this is hard racing, as you know, man. You got to go get all you can. Uh, they were leaning on each other right here, bumping, shoving, but nothing that was by any means crossed the line of being being too much. So just smart racing by all of them, good aggressive racing. And this car is a little more forgiving too, Steve. You can lean on each other more with this car. We've seen that now. Uh, you know, to, to spin somebody out here, you really got to get them in a bad situation. So the car takes a little bit more than the other cars, but just good hard racing. And you can see, we talked about it, William just driving away but using all the racetrack, you know what I mean? And that's what I like about William. Like he seems like this super subdued guy and he is, but in the race car, he's an animal and just, you know, hitting walls, doing everything he can. And that's, that's what William Byron is. He is like, he's split personality, a lot like Joey Legato off the, off out of that car, super nice, you know, everything you want and put him in that car and they just turn into just unbelievable race car drivers. Well, let's look a little bit more global. Let's talk about the organization as whole. Much was made coming into the weekend. 40 years from that famed race that Jeff Bodine won for Hendrick Motorsports All-Star Racing at the time to keep them kind of in business. That was it. Hendrick Motorsports brought 1,500 friends, families, and employees filled the corner of the grandstand. Then they bring the special paint scheme, and then they finish one, two, three. It kind of had that feeling last week. There's so much history at this racetrack with this organization, both positive and very sad over the years. Uh, what does it tell you about Mr. Hendrick, Jeff Gordon now, a very you know front and focal point of the organization? It's one thing to say you're going to do it, but then to go do it, to go have a dominant day, the first organization to finish one, two, three at that famed short track. What do you think it means to the, the drivers currently and the past drivers that have won for, for Hendrick and Mrs. Hendrick? Well, Rick and, and that whole group, they'll be exceptionally humble and, and you know, in winning and they'll be extremely gracious, gracious in losing. But you and I both know they're not surprised they finished first, second, and third. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? They, there's a swagger in Hendrick. Uh, there just is. There's an expectation of excellence. And, uh, and, and, you know, it doesn't surprise anyone in the field. Now it's uncommon, clearly, right? Everything has to go your way to get these kind of finishes. 
But no one's surprised that they had enough speed to do that. No one is surprised they had enough good pit, pit stops to do it. No one is surprised they have the drivers that can do it, crew chiefs that can do it. No one is surprised. And that's been like that for a long time. Uh, there was a little dip in Hendrick's performance when they invested in a lot of young drivers, and it took a little while to get them going. But look, this isn't one, two, three is unusual, but this level of performance is not. And, and it's not going to stop. If you want to win championships and you want to win them consistently and win races on a consistent basis, you've got to go through Hendrick. You just have to. They're going to be in the game, and, and they will continue to do so. They'll do it this year. They'll do it next year. They'll do it the following year. They just do it the right way. Yeah, I, uh, selfishly, I can say I'm thankful I never had to race against them. My entire competitive career was inside those walls at Hendrick Motorsports. I said it last week that there would be this driving determination by these teams to deliver something to Mr. Hendrick that, that you know, he doesn't already have. And that's really what I saw this weekend was that they did this for more than themselves as a driver, more than themselves as, an organ, you know, as, a, as a team. They wanted to be an organizational win. Uh, and I think that's what you saw in that final restart, right? It was some good hard racing between teammates and clean racing between teammates. But now over 300 wins in 40 years, poised to make another run at the championship with some of their drivers already locked in. And I would assume that's going to continue through the summer. So let's talk about where the race was. Martinsville. Last week it was Richmond, a late yellow. Everybody has to take tires. The lead changes in the pit. Denny Hamlin wins. Same format this week, different results. A late yellow. No one comes to take tires up front. And the same person who was leading the race wins the race. Let's talk about short track racing. Very different. Richmond to Martinsville. What was your overall thought of the last two weeks? So look, you know, I've been to both races and the racing on the racetrack is pretty intense. There's a lot going on. It's it's uh, really hard racing uh, in, in both events. Uh, there was, you know, really almost no car failures up until the very end of the race uh, when John Hunter and Nemechek had his problem. Every car was still running. And we saw that last week. And so uh, the reliability of the cars, the toughness of the cars, uh, you know, I spoke about it earlier, how difficult it is to spin someone out. Those things have really changed short track racing. Uh, you know, clearly. This is a completely different car, and it races differently, and and it's very competitive. It and that's what's that's what's wild about it. I hear people, you know, some people say they're not happy with the short track package. The race is not good. Go to the track, like at the track, man. It is super competitive. It's not the same kind of race that we saw ten years ago. There's no question about that. You know, and you saw that with the tire strategy, right? If you if you didn't take tires ten years ago, when you got when you would try to launch, you couldn't you could hardly launch with that many laps on your tires, but these tires are more durable. They wear out, Steve. That's what's interesting. You know, we keep talking about the tires need to wear, the tires need to wear. Well, the left rear is wore out. They just don't lose speed. Um, so, look, I, I, I understand some people don't like the racing. I think what it is to me, Steve, is you just, you described how you win a race at Martinsville 20 years ago, the same as today. I do think track position is more important than it used to be. There's no question about that. But what that means is qualifying is important. Pit stops are important. All the things that you have to do to complete a weekend have become more important with this car. And uh, there will be a continued effort to try to make the speed fall off as the run goes on. There's a lot of effort going into it. And I think once we get to that, I think, I think the short track racing, we'll see a lot of what we saw 10, 15 years ago. So it's interesting. Um, I agree with that last sentiment. I think short track racing at Martinsville looks very similar for the leader. Um, if you were going to go win, those are the days you had to have. You had to qualify decent. You didn't have to be perfect, but decent. And you had to be efficient. I, I use the term, it's a running game last week, because that's what Martinsville is. It's lap after lap after lap of efficiency. It's a game of inches, a game of positions, one at a time, a stop at a time. There is no, you know, 10th to 1st last green-white checker that we might see this coming week at Texas. Those aren't going to exist at Martinsville. It is a, you are rewarded one of the most special trophies in NASCAR with that grandfather clock because you really stood the test of time, or in this case, 400 laps. You had to be good all day long to be great at the end. I can appreciate that. I also can appreciate the fan that has an opinion on how it should look. Uh, I love that the fans came out. The place looked packed. So looking ahead, though, mile and a half, Texas, two very different ends, high speed at one end, flat at the other end. Jeff, same cast of characters? Are we looking at a different cast? I mean, from what I've seen, the Toyotas anywhere that's high speed have been great. Hendrick has been very dominant. Are we looking at the same cast of characters when we head to Texas? 
I, I think so. I, I think, you know, the year has been, there are going to be some teams that improve and there are going to be some teams that go the other way. It happens every year, but you know, this far into the year, Steve, I think we've seen, you know, who the best cars are, who the best drivers are, um, who the best are on pit road with strategies. Uh, and, and, and by the way, this, these mile and a half, so where this car has been really good, it's been really good races. I actually watched the fall race from last year, the NBC race. Uh, and it was like, it was a really good race. It was really, really competitive. And I expect to see the same. The weather looks like it's going to be in the low 80s, sunny. That always helps. So I think, I think that uh, the, the, the short track race that people wanted to see this past weekend, I think they'll see it at Texas. <laughs> as crazy as that sounds. Well, we've had super speedways. We've had road course. We've had short tracks. And now it's a mile and a half off to Texas. The NASCAR series head. We'll be back next week to break down everything that happened out in Texas on NASCAR and NBC. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.